Ladies and gentlemen, the great Roosevelt Bowie here on Syracuse Legends. And uh, Bowie, what's happened? Played, what, 76 to 80? Like 76 to 80, it was a, a really good time for me. I met some great, great guys, and yeah. I realized when I played with them that it was something special. And uh, even today, I'm still in contact with most of them. Roosevelt Bowie, so I go up and we'll play at Brockport every once in a while. And this guy still plays as if it was 76 to 80. You get the ball in the post, he takes a drop step. If you're going to hang on him at all, he's going to take the elbow. Show me the patented Rosie Bowie ball in the post. Spin. Well, <laughs> I don't hit anybody. Right. If they move, it's not my job to. But worry. you're coming there. It's not my job to worry about if I hit them or not. It's their job to worry about their head. It's nothing personal. I'm not mean or nasty. It's just what I do. Rosie played uh, under the great Coach Beheim early in Coach Beheim's career, obviously. Yes. Also with a, a assistant coach, Rick Patino. Yes. And Rick, who coaches with Louisville. And I always think it's funny because Rick was a, uh, as you described him, a fiery assistant that uh, maybe used some cuss words once in a while. Yeah, he'd, uh, he'd slip every now and then, but you got to remember I was raised by a good Christian family. We, we, uh, I couldn't even say lie at home. I was my, my sister, she told a story. You couldn't say lie. We couldn't even say lie at home, and I came there, and he, he made a comment to me, and I was like, and I stopped, and I, I walked toward him, and I walked away. And then he said it again. And I, and I was going up there to tell him something. And, and right. Coach Beheim sees from up in the stands. He comes running out, Rosie, what's the problem? I was like, Coach Patino just swore at me. And I, I don't swear at people, and I don't accept being sworn at by somebody else. And Coach, Patino, and Coach uh, Beheim looks at Rick. And he used a couple of unique words. Shut the heck up. <laughs> and I was standing back there going, na la 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 na 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 boo boo. <laughs> so, uh, so that was, uh, and then after that, we, I went over to the house with both he and Joanne, and we had uh, had dinner, and he, he said, you know, I get a little excited, and I said, yeah, I know, he's, but uh, he was uh, good people. And you know, he to win. Um, Rakeem Christmas, yep. and Coach had talked about some of the greats we've had, Billy Owens and these different guys that, you know, rebound goes up, shot goes up, you're boxing out, you're just not letting any guy in there, you know. Rock right now needs to work on some of that kind of stuff. What would you, you know, what would some of the stuff you would do with him to kind of get him, you know, physically strong to rebound that basketball, not let anybody slip in, and and because he's got unbelievable potential. Yeah, you know that the biggest thing about boxing out is you have to head hunt. Yeah. You have to head hunt. First of all, you got to work. You got to work with two other guys because it's not boxing out is not done by one person. It's done by a triangle. So you got to have two other people that you trust that you know are not going to let anybody slip past them. And uh, I mean, to the point where if somebody slips past them, they'll fall down in front of them, not to let them get to the ball. And once you know that, it's it's pretty easy that you got three guys you can depend upon. But at, after that, you've got to go after the ball. People have a tendency to stop and wait for a rebound, when in actuality, you go to the rebounds is an oxymoron. It's you're actually supposed to. The ball goes up. You go away from the ball, you knock the snot out of the guy trying to come in, <laughs> right. and then you go and you create more space. And then you pick the ball up off the floor. So uh, simple. It, it's pretty simple. But when people yell, "Go to the rebound!" The guy gets all nervous, runs to the rebound, the ball bounces over him. Coach Beheim starts pulling his glasses off, breaking them in half. <laughs> right. When the guys got to understand, it's really go to the rebound, stop, see somebody, other team, hit them, and everybody, but all three guys have got to do. It. You got to have a rebounding triangle. Louis Bowie show. Everyone knows about it. Uh, super popular. Um, you guys would get out on the break, you'd run like deers, you'd score. You averaged 96 points a game. Yeah. Well, let me, let's take a step back. In high school, you were, what'd you lose, one game out of 60 games or out something? Of 60, we played, we're 65 and one. 65 and one. So then it comes to Syracuse, yeah. you lose your first game, and you're apologizing to Jim Bayheim. Hey, we, I lost the first game, and I had 12 and 10. And I went over to him, and I was like, hey, coach, I'm sorry. And he's like, what? Like what? I was like, <laughs> right. well, I don't know what you do when you lose. I thought you apologized. I don't. Like, You're not used to losing. <laughs> he just laughs. No, no, no. I'll keep working hard. I'm like, what? what? Yeah, let's let's try not to do that. Very yeah, much. yeah. So you get to Cuse, um, the Louis Bowie show. Again, you guys have outstanding four years, um, averaging as I mentioned, 96 points without a three pointer. Yeah. I mean, think about what you guys must have done. You know, and it, and it was, it was kind these of, teams now, not to interrupt you, these teams now, 60 points a game you know, with the three-pointers, whatever, 57, you know, 63 points a game. You know, the way Coach Beheim started out, he said, listen, I don't care what you do on the court, but you better be going there as fast as you can. So we took the ball out, and he said once the ball came off the, came off the rebound, he wanted us down the court as fast as possible, as humanly possible. 
So if you think about it that way, we were getting shots up because we didn't waste any time bringing the ball up. The ball was flying. So uh, I, I, I would have to say we, I remember for us, you used to get free fries when we got to 100 points. Nice. <laughs> Who'd hook you up with some free fries? Uh, at, Mc, at McDonald's. And you know what the crazy thing was? When you could actually get you some free get, stuff. You could get fries for, you get fries at McDonald's. So we'd be like, the game's <laughs> over. We got like 78 points. We're sitting down there relaxing. And then the whole place go, we want fries. fries. We want fries. <laughs> and we're like, and we didn't, we didn't run the score up. The second team would go out there and start going bananas. And I was over, I, I used to always grab a horn and blow the horn and throw my towel and. Do whatever you could. Uh, and push people down. And I was a little bit of a troublemaker back then. But, eh, you're not anymore. But though. It, you know, it, got, it got everybody going. But we, we, we were regularly over 100 points in a game. It's incredible. And we, it, was, it was really, it was like fast break points. We could, score, we could score 10, 12 points in a split second. Two block shots, a turnover, a steal. And we're down the floor. I remember that we scored the fastest basket that I can remember was like 4.3 seconds. Wow. It threw the tip ball up. I tipped it to Lewis. Lewis told Eric Sanford when I tipped the ball to fake towards the middle and then sprint under the basket as fast as he could. Yeah. So I tipped Dump the ball it. to Lewis. He catches. He doesn't even catch. He jumps up and he just two hands it over his head. It bounces once and Eric threw it through the basket so hard I thought the basket was going to come up out the ground. <laughs> but that's just the way. It, that's what we did. And then Coach Beheim today compared to Coach Beheim with you, night and day difference. Well, when I, when I shouldn't I, say night and day, but pretty. When I came back from, from Italy and I went to one of their practices, I, it was like maybe five years later, I went to a practice and I saw chairs in the gym. I almost passed out. Right, no chairs. There was not a chair in the gym and we could not sit down. Matter of fact, if, if he caught you with your hands on your knees, that meant you were tired. And so he's like, oh, must be tired. We've got to run Better some run. more. <laughs> so we had guys that would... They, they were, he's like, are, you t are you holding your knees? No, no, I'm holding my shorts. All of our shorts were short in the back, and he came down to your knees in the front because we were like, he yeah, stressed yeah. them out. But he was, uh, you know, and everybody was watching. You tired? No, I'm not tired. You could be standing up there with one eye hanging out of your head. <gasps> you tired? <laughs> I'm tired. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> Something in my throat. <clears throat> you know, it was, it was just so wild that uh, yeah, I think somebody told me, you can't be tired until you're about 37. I was like, well, you're only 20. I was like 18, 19, 20 years old, so. You only got a couple grays now, and you're 50 what? Well, I've, I have, uh, I've got good uh, XM 55. 55. My, uh, I, it comes from my good genes. My, my grandmother's half Native American, <laughs> and my, my maternal grandmother's half Native American, and my paternal grandmother is, uh, is uh, full-blooded Native American, Seminole. And my wow. grandmother, when she passed away at uh, 60, 64, 65 years old, she had like three gray hair, three gray hairs. Hmm. So it's, uh, I don't know, it's, um, I don't dye anything, so. Rosie the fisherman, doesn't dye his hair, good looking yeah. guy. I'll tell you what, I don't know about good looking, but I sure Hanging enjoy out. everything I'm doing. Atta boy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the great Roosevelt Bowie Live at 76 to 80 Syracuse University, one of the greats and a good friend of mine. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Bill. All right, bud.